Judge Gorsuch has outstanding legal skills, a brilliant mind, tremendous discipline. Judge Kavanaugh has impeccable credentials, unsurpassed qualifications, and a proven commitment to equal justice under the law. She is a woman of unparalleled achievement, towering intellect, sterling credentials, and unyielding loyalty to the Constitution. Welcome back to America Decides. The three justices appointed by former President Trump did it when he was president to the Supreme Court played history will record a major role in overturning Roe versus Wade. Interestingly, former First Lady Melania Trump today expressed what can only be described as her unequivocal support for abortion rights. Listen. There is no room for compromise when it comes to this essential right that all women possess from birth individual freedom. What does my body, my choice, really mean? I'm going to file that under, hmm. I want to bring in our political panel, Dave Weigel and Sabrina Rodriguez. Dave is a politics reporter for Semaphore. Sabrina, national politics reporter for The Washington Post. Dave, this has been an interesting week for mm -hmm. Republicans and the self-described, this is their terminology, pro-life movement within it. J.D. Vance says at the debate, Republicans have to do a much better job earning trust. While he is saying that, somewhat kind of flail around the difficulties of the underlying specifics of access to reproductive health care, Trump posts on social media, I would veto a national abortion ban. Mm -hmm. Now we have Melania Trump putting further distance around this question that the pro-life mo mo movement not only considers sacrosanct and decided, but essential to their mobilization. Sum all that up for us, if you could. There's a long-running Trump strategy here of just not admitting something if it's a problem, not admitting something if, it, if it's a personal problem, if it's, if it's a legal problem, whatever it is. And I'm reminded of what they did with Project 2025, which exists, which has people which in the Trump real. administration working on it, denying until people start to, if you're in the Trump camp, believe, well, he says it's false, it must be false. That's what they, they've done. Now, Trump has Trump ever said I'd sign a national abortion ban? No. Uh, he has he has he talked about the specific things his, his administration would do, who it appoint, what it would do. He hasn't talked about that. They've just tried to move the conversation. They're actually pretty comfortable saying we won't do a national ban, even if even though Vance did say when he's running for Senate they supported one, uh, because when their base hears that, when the voter who's maybe with him on everything but abortion hears that, it's enough to say, well, I trust him. He didn't do it before. He won't do it now. Sabrina, how would you sum up this week on this particular issue? and how Democrats view the week that is nearly over. I mean, this is just the latest example of Republicans trying to muddy the waters on, on, on this issue, on abortion. I mean, looking at the debate, what was the takeaway from what we heard from J.D. Vance? You know, it was him expressing this sympathy, him expressing that he learned a lot from the Ohio referendum that restored abortion rights, him talking about, you know, that, that there needed to be something that Republicans learned from this, that they've been losing on this issue. But then at the same time, he, as, as mm. Dave mentioned, supports, has supported in the past a federal abortion ban. And this is just what we've seen from Trump as well, him at one point expressing he might support a referendum going on in Florida, his now home state, and then later on saying that, of course, he would not vote for it. So this is really, when you look at the, the undecided voter, that voter in the middle that is just tuning into the election, this is the kind of messaging that puts them in a position of not really knowing where Republicans stand on it. And for that person who maybe it's not the number one issue that they're voting on, but feel maybe a little bit uncomfortable comfortable with, you know, a, an abortion ban, this gives them permission to say, well, you know, they're not going to sign a national abortion ban or mm, I'm not totally clear. And that's where Democrats are really frustrated right now. And, and mm -hmm. we're hearing them say, like, do not listen to this rhetoric and think that this suddenly means that their agenda is different. And they're really trying to bring home, no, this is the agenda that Republicans have stood for. This is the former president who was responsible for the overturning of Roe versus Wade. I like your assessment on this. This will be the first presidential election mm -hmm. since Roe was overturned. It seems to me that's the biggest X factor. We can't know mm -hmm. what it means until we see it. Mm -hmm. Would you agree with that? Yes, we've only had a couple elections since then. We've had state elections. Some, spe some special state, yeah. elections, some referenda, but we haven't and had a national verdict on this. Right, and each time we've had female voters who might have sat out or been Republican in the past or not voted in special elections, they voted Democratic. And under that is, polled, oftentimes. Under polled, and that is, that is part of the Harris strategy, as far as, as I understand it. Yes, there, are they going to lose some, uh, not just white union workers and, and working class voters that Biden won? Of all races, they're probably losing some of that. Will they pick up more women? That's something that ring, <laughs> sends Democrats' ears ringing because they heard that in 2016, it wasn't true. But in the first election, 
after Dobbs. They do think it's true. It's been showing up in other elections. There are suburban women in Bucks County and in, in, in Maricopa County who have not voted Democratic before, but they're going to vote for the referendum in Arizona, and, they, and they, they're gettable for Harris if that's the issue. Because I'm thinking of some of these states, Arizona being one where it matters, not only is that or there a referendum there, but every election. It's saying that we're going to throw this back to the states. If you live in a state that's, that's, that's gettable for Republicans at any point, like Arizona, if you live in Michigan, if you live in those places, it is an active issue in each, each election. We've never had a race like that before. Sabrina, your assessment, is it an X factor? Is it the X factor in this race? I don't know that it goes so far to say the X factor. I think that at the end of the day, the voters can hold multiple issues at the same time. And we talk to folks every day that tell us, you know, abortion's on the list of issues that they mm -hmm. care about. But I think it is one that Democrats know that is ultimately going to help deliver for them in the election. I think the day after the election, we'll be having conversations about the turnout amongst young voters, the turnout amongst women, specifically, as Dave mentions, women, suburban women. Um, and this will be one of those issues that drove them, especially in the states where we've already seen movement on abortion bans or where we're already seeing, you know, ballot initiatives where people will get to go out not just to vote for president, not just to vote for down ballot, but will actually get to vote over the future of abortion rights in their state. I want to play you some sound from the former president in Saginaw, Michigan today. And it highlights something that his vice presidential nominee had a very hard time with at the end of the debate. Let's listen. We did great in 2016. A lot of people don't know. We did much better in 2020. We won. We won. We did win. It was a rigged election. It was a rigged election. You have to tell Kamala Harris, that's why I'm doing it again. If I thought I lost, I wouldn't be doing this again. You know where I'd be right now? In the beaches of Monte Carlo. He didn't win in 2020. And Jack Smith's filing mm -hmm. also illustrates that in a conversation after being told he lost, Vice President Pence said, you should concede or take a bow and think about 2024, to which then President Trump says, that's such a long way away. Mm -hmm. He lost. Right. And he still can't come to grips with that. His supporters don't want to come to grips with that. And I use that term grip in a very specific way. He and the Trumpian Republican Party remain in thrall of this lie. Right. And the way Democrats used it, you saw Tim Wells use it, is whatever else you think of him, whatever his promises are, this is the guy who on the way out of office broke the law. Uh, and what other laws would he break? How else would he affect your life if he's untrammeled, if he has advisors who are going to do whatever he says? The one thing I heard from Democrats after, after the debate, because they got more, I think, more satisfied with Walls' uh, performance, not just as the night went on, but in the day after, was it would have been nice if he'd brought that up first. You see, you see CBS's moderators decided to go after the, the, the new news in Israel first. If they had asked that question first, if Walls had brought it up, I'm only here because I'm uh, because the last guy who had your job didn't want to break the law. Would it have been more effective? But they're they're buying they're buying getting some earned media, and they're happy to talk about this because there are a lot of voters. We talked about Dobbs. There are a lot of voters where it's if it's not the single issue, it is enough to say, I like some things about Trump. I do not want that back in, 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 the, in the Oval Office. I want to vote Republican down the ballot. I want to vote Republican in the future. I don't want four years of. Who knows what he'll do because because of this January 6th experience. Dave Weigel, you have to get the last word on this. Dave oh. Weigel, Sabrina Rodriguez, thank you very much for your mm -hmm. time.